and welcome to Sanford Flip Math. Uh, this is pre-calculus. Uh, we have been working through the Demand and Weights Foley Kennedy book, uh, currently in Chapter 8, although we're really not doing anything out of the book right now, per se, uh, because I just think we need to do a more thorough examination of what's going on in conic sections. Uh, so this is our third video, our second uh, shape for conic sections, uh, parabolas, circles, ellipses, hyperbolas. Um, we're working on circles. Uh, probably worth pointing out that uh, the section numbers at the top have been corresponding with the section numbers in the Demand Awaits Foley Kennedy book, even though, again, we're not following that book. But uh, the circles are really uh, dealt with in a very light manner back in Chapter P, the prerequisite chapter. They consider that not even really a pre-calculus topic, and uh, I would agree it's just when it happens, it happens, and it just hasn't happened for us yet. So, so here we go. Uh, we're going to look at the equation of a circle, and I uh, just want to remind you of the definition of a circle, the set of all points in a plane equidistant, so equal distance, uh, to uh, a fixed point. Okay, so in, and in a circle, that distance that happens to be equal is called the radius, and that fixed point happens to be called the center. And, and I know this is no shock to, to anybody. Uh, we're, we're talking about something like this. And the basic idea is that this distance, if you measured it, would be the same as this distance if you measured it, which would be the same as this distance if you measured it, uh, all the way around the circle. And again, it's that idea that the radius is the same all the way around. Well, I need to talk a little bit about where does the equation come from for a circle. And so, so here, here's the idea. Um, so here we have this center, and I'm going to call this h and k, and you're used to seeing those letters for a parabola, and the, they're going to work for, for circles and the other shapes as well. And then we're going to look at, well, how far away is this point, which I'm going to call just x and y, because I really want it to represent any point on this circle. And so if I wanted to find out how far away those two are, which would be the radius, okay, um, if I wanted to find out how far those are, I could actually do something with like the distance formula or something. And what, what I want to do is kind of uh, make a little right triangle in the middle of all of this. And this little right triangle has a distance along the bottom. Well, I, I don't know how far that is, but if I was going from this center at, at h and uh, to this x value that, ha that is x, I would have to subtract those and that would tell me how far that is. Okay? Similarly, so all we're saying is how far did it move horizontally and that's really how much does the x value change, so x minus h. In the same manner, uh, from, the, from this verti for this vertical one, it would be the difference between the y values. And if that's true, then with the Pythagorean theorem, okay, so you you remember the Pythagorean theorem, uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, if I have a is this horizontal distance plus b is this vertical distance, then all of that should be equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is r squared. And what this does is this allows us to have any, remember this was that h and k was the center. x and y is any point on the circle, and the radius was r. And, and this is actually the format. This allows us to fi uh, find the relationship for any x value on this circle with that center and that radius. And this doesn't, I, I know most people don't like this because it's not y equals or even x equals, but this is actually considered standard form for the equation of a circle. Uh, so, and that is the information, that, that that's really the, the giant information, the big takeaway from this whole thing. Uh, so like with parabolas, you had all this other stuff, you know, a focus and a directrix, all this stuff with the circles, very straightforward. This is probably the only video that we're going to do for this, uh, this section uh, about circles uh, because it, it's really straightforward. Okay, so that's the information. There it is, standard form for the equation of a circle, center radius form. And let me just kind of emphasize something here uh, while, while it, this is still up. This is the same thing that was on the other page, uh, just a little cleaner for, for uh, presentation 
purposes. Um, so notice that this is a minus and this is a minus because these are both inside. And remember how when we've talked about transformations, uh, when we talk about in, inside, you know, we have to do inverse. Okay, so let, let's get a little more concrete with this. Um, let me uh, grab that and slide it over. Uh, there we go. Well, that was interesting. That ended up separate. Okay, so for instance, let, let's say I have just like x minus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 4. Okay, and we're just going to take a second and we're going to graph this. Okay, so based on what we just said, the center should be at, well, the opposite of minus 3 would be plus 3 or positive 3. The opposite of minus 1 would be positive 1. So 1, 2, 3, 1. The center is here. Now, this is the tricky thing to remember. Remember, this is r squared. So r must be 2. Well, r could be negative 2. The radius could be negative 2, but that doesn't really make sense. So to graph this, all I'm going to do is start at the center point, and I'm going to count 2 to the left. I'm going to count 2 to the right. I'm going to count 2 to the down. <laughs> I'm going to count 2 up to the up. And then we're just going to sketch in a circle. And that, that's it. Uh, so the domain and range, well, if you were going to talk about that, the domain for this goes from negative, I'm sorry, not negative, big silly, that's range. Uh, the domain goes from uh, 1 to 5 because it went to left and right, and it includes both of those. The range uh, is from negative 1 uh, up to 3. And I think that's it. I don't re even really know what else to ask. I mean, we could talk about symmetry, and it has lots of symmetry because it's a circle, uh, but nobody really does that. Okay? So center, radius, domain and range, I think that's pretty much it. All right, so uh, let's go the other way. And then we'll, we'll do uh, some, we're going to have, you know, it's not going to come in this form, so we'll have to play around with it. Okay, so <coughs> here we have, uh, the equation of a circle, and we're told that the center is at 512. Okay, so we can just kind of, I'm going to go ahead and start this out like a template. And I know that there's something squared over there. Okay, so here we go. Uh, 512, so 5 is the x value, it goes with the x, and it's already, it's, it's minus 5 because inside inverse, and uh, minus 12. And then on the other side, it's supposed to be the radius squared, so this will be 8 squared. And honestly, there's really not much else to do with this. I, I know you were looking for more, because that's what we want to do is a bunch of stuff. But honestly, yeah, that's it. Sorry. Sorry to have it so disappointing. Okay. So uh, pretty straightforward most of the time. Okay, what if I give you different information? It says the equation of a circle that satisfies the conditions endpoints of a diameter are at those two points. Well, endpoints of a diameter, I, I, want, I think it's worth drawing these things uh, to see what's going on. So negative 4, 0, and negative 4, negative 6. Those are the endpoints of a diameter. Now, just a reminder that a diameter has endpoints on the circle and it cuts through the center of the circle. So what that means is that we're really talking about something like this. Okay, so here's that diameter. Now, if I knew the center, I'd be rocking. If I knew the radius, I would really be rocking. I don't know any of that. That's a problem. Well, I know that the center is going to be somewhere in here. Okay, so the center is at the midpoint of a diameter. Now, I think for this particular one, it's fairly easy to find the midpoint. Since the x values are the same, the x value will be that same x value. It's not moving left or right, right? It's only going up and down. <coughs> and then the center is going to be at the midpoint of the 0 and the negative 6 also. Well, halfway between those is just negative 3. This particular problem made that easy. Now, 
I'm going to remind you, uh, in case we get some ugly ones, <coughs> that the midpoint formula is the average of the x values and the average of the y values. Okay, so just kind of put that back in your brain uh, so you remember it. So the idea would be we would be doing negative 4 plus negative 4, negative 8, divided by 2 is negative 4. 0 plus negative 6 is negative 6, divided by 2 is negative 3. Okay, so for this specific problem, I didn't really need that. Okay, so x, uh, so this is the center. Uh, I'm going to start building the equation. So I have x minus the x value. Well, minus a negative 4 is really going to be plus 4. Y minus a negative 3 is really going to be plus 3 equals, well, what's the radius? <coughs> now, again, for this particular one, I think it's fairly easy to note that if we're going from 0 down to negative 3, the radius is 3. Let me also tell you, though, that uh, if, if it's not so easy to spot it, you can just kind of put r squared there and then substitute a point. Okay, so plug in x and y and solve for r squared. I'm going to go ahead and do it that way, even though it's kind of overkill for this particular problem. So if I do negative 4 plus 4 squared plus 0 plus 3 squared. So again, this came from one of the ordered pairs, and it wouldn't matter which. Okay, so negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Uh, 0 plus 3 is 3. So r squared is 9. So the radius is really 3. Shocking. I know, sorry. Um, so this equation becomes, now again, I, I did the, that the long way just because I know that it's possible for problems to come up. <coughs> and those problems uh, may not be quite so nice as this. It'll look similar, but if the endpoints of the diameter are really funky, you know, they're not directly above or below each other, or they're not directly horizontal to each other, then you're going to have to do a little bit more work. Okay? So pretty straightforward there. All right. Uh, we got two more examples we've got to do. Um, this one is very similar to how I, uh, the very first one that I started with uh, after we gave the equation. So remember, the center is at h and k. It's inverse and inverse. So this should be at 3, negative 7. Okay, and a reminder that this is not r, this is r squared. So if r squared is 4, r is the square root of 4, 2. Okay, so we're just doing the square root of both sides. And again, technically it's plus or minus, but it's really, you know, I mean, it's a radius, it's a distance. Okay, okay so 3, negative 7, I'm doing my graph a little goofy because I see it's in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so there's the center. And then you just go up, down, left, and right, whatever the radius is. So up 2, uh, down 2, left 2, right 2. That's weird. It's kind of similar to the one I did on the other page, on the other slide. Okay, so that's the center. That's the radius. Uh, and then that's the graph. So that's that's it. Okay. Um, the, only, the only glitch in the matrix, as it were, is what if it's that? That, uh, this is not in this form. <clears throat> so this re requires some completing the square. Okay? And the joyous thing about this is we're going to have to complete the square twice because this particular one has two perfect squares in it. So this is going to look a little different than what we've done with parabolas, but it's really not that different. So first all, of all, uh, as is our custom, we're going to move the constant to the other side. When I do that, I would like to group x's together and y's together, and I would like to do that with some extra space in there. Okay? So, so here we go. Uh, here are my x's, x squared minus 4x, and as promised, I'm going to leave a little space plus y squared plus 6y. Also, as promised, I'm going to leave uh, some space, and I'm going to add that 7 to both sides, so equals 7. <coughs> okay, so make sure you kind of look and see what's going on, why, what just happened, and why does it look different. Okay? I'm gonna, for this particular guy right here, I'm going to complete the square. So I'm still doing that half of b squared thing. Okay, so I'm doing negative 4 divided by 2 half of it is negative 2 squared, so this is going to be plus 4. 
I can't just add 4 to one side of the equation. I need to add 4 to the other side as well. Okay, Same song, second verse, this time for the y's. Okay, again, half of 6 is 3 squared will be 9. Got to do it on the other side also. Okay, again, we can't just add something to one side of an equation. This is going to factor just like it did when we were doing parabolas. Uh, so whatever that half of number was, it's going to be the same. Okay. Um, plus, uh, same song, second verse. Y plus 3, again, half of. Okay, notice these are all squared. Okay, and then this will equal, well, 7 plus 4 is 13. I'm sorry, that's clever. 7 plus 4 is 11, plus 9 is 20. I was remembering uh, 4 plus 9 is 13. Okay, so what's the center? What's the radius? And let's do a little graph. Okay, well, the center, again, inverse and inverse, so 2, negative 3. And remember, this is the radius squared. So if the radius squared is 20, then the radius is the square root of 20. Now, when I list my answer, I'm going to have to do, well, you know, the 20 is 4 times 5, so this is going to be 2 root 5. Now, when I graph this in my head, I'm going to be thinking the square root of 20, well, that's 4 point something. I sure do wish I knew what that was a little bit better. Okay, so I'll just type that into the calculator, 4.47. Um, now, again, I'm not going to leave this as my answer. I really want the... This, the square root answer. Okay, so uh, this is my answer for center and radius, and then when I graph, that, then I'm going to need to do the approximation. Okay, so here I am doing this, and I'm saying going to 2, negative 3, what is it about the right side of the graph today? Not sure. And uh, we're going to go uh, whatever the radius is, up, down, left, and right. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so about 4 and a half ish uh, one, two, three, four, five, about four and a half-ish. Okay, again, left, I have, oh, that was supposed to be a little more lined up, sorry. Uh, left, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, so about four and a half-ish. And again, one, two, three, four, five, so about four and a half. Okay, well, this is the most beautiful circle I ever made. Okay, not really. Looks like a football. I think we need some... There we go. There's the football. That'll really be a football when we do ellipses next. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, this wraps up Sanford Flip Math this time, uh, working with circles and their equations. And thank you much for watching. We're out.